awesome episode today on Wife of the Party. I met this lovely person today, and she is the nicest, funniest, sweetest, happiest, nicest, did I already say that? But she is very nice, talented actress, Jessica Lowe. She's currently on a show called Minx. Uh, She plays Bambi, which is the best. She's the best character. I love her character because she's just so wants to do good and she's happy and she's sexy and she's funny. And the show, if you're not familiar with it, is on HBO. And it's about a group of people spearheaded by a woman, a feminist in the 70s who start a magazine with naked men and naked men. And it's such a good show. I really like the show. I was watching the show before. And Jessica, who's uh, an actress on it, agreed to come talk to me. And I just had so much fun with her. She was a great, great conversation about acting, about improv, about her journey, about being from Albuquerque, about um, pumpkin pie. We talk about a lot of stuff. So I hope you enjoy this episode with Jessica. Thank you for coming back every week. Thank you for your emails. BirdieBoyProductions.com is where you can find Wife of the Party information. You can click on my tab and you can send me an email there if you want to. I read all of them. I don't get to respond to all of them, but I do read them. So again, I had such a nice time talking to Jessica Lowe. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did. What is wrong with me? I'm like brain farting right now. Are you tired? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Did you work all day? No, I worked all day yesterday. Okay. 15 hours. Oh, my God. So that's just how it goes now in film, I think. Is it? I don't know. Maybe that's not how it's supposed to be. But, yeah, if you're a regular, they can work you as long as they want, as long as they give you a 12-hour turnaround. Wow. So I I worked from 4.32 until 6.38. In the morning, 4.30? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Everybody thinks acting so glamorous. It's not. It's a grind, it isn't is a it? It is a grind, yeah. I mean, I acted for one minute. <laughs> I went to school in New York to study acting and then acted and then went, I think I'm a better writer. That's great. So I pivoted into writing. But yeah, acting is hard. Yeah, it, it's wild. Yeah. It's you just, seem like you enjoy it. I I love performing. Um, it's like the 12 minutes a day I get to perform. <laughs> and then the <laughs> rest 12 and a half hours. just sitting around and like... Um, waiting for camera and yeah, like we, I probably act around maybe like a cool 37 minutes out of the day. Out of that 15 hour day? I think so. Wowza. That would make me insane. Insane. What do you do when you're just not, when you're waiting? Um, go over lines, try not to snack too much. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, like all, all that stuff. Just like talk nonsense with the co-stars and that type of stuff. That's the part I would enjoy. Yes. The talking nonsense. Yes. Yeah, that would be just the fun acting part. a fool. So I watched your stand up from a long time ago. Oh my gosh, little baby, you little were baby, such just a baby. <laughs> You're still adorable, but you were adorable. I mean, that was almost a dare. Like my my friend Jen signed up for Los Angeles Community College um, intro to stand up. She was like, "Please do this with me." And I was taking like Groundlings classes and UCB classes, and I was like, "Sure, why not?" And I met the most fascinating people I've ever met in my entire life. Really? It's, it's $66 for like an eight week course. Oh my God. I bet it's and, not that much anymore. <laughs> I know. And then the finale was just doing your tight five in the belly room at the comedy store. And I decided to buy the DVD and then I put it online. And I think that's one of the reasons why I got my first big film. No, really? Adam Sandler Googled me when I was a potential for this role. And he was like, he, I got called in for a meeting with him. And he was like, your stand-up's really great. Do you do that a lot? And I was like, uh, not really, but I look forward to doing it more. He's like, well, you're great. I was like, that is wild that he Googled me. That's crazy. Had his assistant do it. <laughs> that's so crazy. Yeah. And that's the only time you do stand-up, that one clip that I saw? Yeah. Wow. One and done. I might have done it one more time at like an open like room somewhere, but it's just, I don't like driving that much. I don't like (laughs) being around like horny drunk men. I don't enjoy that at all. So I just, I like, I didn't have like the spine for it. 
You know, I think women in comedy have to have exactly that. Yeah. A real big, spine, like hardy spine yes. and thick skin. Yes. And to be able to kind of, I feel like they kind of needed to have grown up with a bunch of brothers. Yeah. You know? I grew up in a cul-de-sac with all boys. So that should have been enough. Yeah, but, you know? right. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? Albuquerque. Oh, I like Albuquerque a yeah. lot. Yeah. There's a great Mexican restaurant there. Dumbest thing ever said, right? Yeah. But, um... But I think the best Mexican food I've ever had is in Albuquerque, but I have no idea what it is or I mean, where I've been. I think it has, it's not Tex-Mex. It's very different. No, no. Yeah. And I think that it has like Native American influence. Oh, okay. So like, I don't know if it's typical in normal Tex-Mex restaurants to have just s- honey on the table mm-hmm. because everyone always gets the side of sopapillas, mm-hmm. which is like fried, fried flatbread. And it's delicious. Delicious. And you put honey all over it. Uh, and that's the first and probably only place I've ever had that. Yeah. Is in Albuquerque. And then all year long, you can get Christmas, which is like what? you like if you're getting like a burrito, they want red, green or Christmas. What's Christmas? Red and Both, green? Yeah. You get, just slather that. But I'm a green. I'm a green. Person. You're a green girl. Green stand. How'd you like? Uh, how, how did you get here? Well, I spent my first 18 years in Albuquerque and then. Every year we did cross-country road trips to Wisconsin, which is where my dad's from. And we kept going through Chicago. And I was like, this is like the exact pace I want. Chicago? I, I'm too afraid of Los Angeles and New York. Mm. But it felt like that Midwestern charm. It was such a nice blend of people. And I just felt very like fast, but for like a little desert mouse like me. I was like, this is the exact <laughs> experience I want. So then I heard about Northwestern. And it having like great communication school and all that. So I applied there and then that's where I went. And then after that, uh, I moved out here uh, in 2008 um, and then spent two years doing improv classes. And I was a front desk bitch at an agency. Oh, I'm allowed to swear. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. I was like um, the receptionist at a lit agency, which I would have been so good at when I was seven. I had, I had too many thoughts. <laughs> God, when you were seven, <laughs> <laughs> I was like doing grocery orders and like give, like making the coffee and stuff, which yeah, yeah. I liked, but it wasn't where I wanted to be officially. And then I got an, a chance to audition for Boom Chicago, which is an improv theater in Amsterdam. Mm. And then I got that, so I left the country for two and a half years and did comedy in Amsterdam. Wow! At this place that like. Seth Meyers and Ike Barinholtz and Jordan Peele and uh, Kay Cannon, all these amazing people have, that's where they get their 10,000 hours for sure. Um, Do you know Amber Ruffin? No. She has a show on Peacock Mm -hmm. and she was a writer for Seth Meyers. Okay. Um, And she's incredible. Um, And she was in my cast. So we were bonded forever. Um, And then I did a cruise ship with Second City for four months. What and was that, that was like? Wild. Was wild. it? Wild. Why? So, there's so many things to say about being a comedian on a cruise ship. I mean, if I'm like a seven and a half in LA, I'm like a 48 on a cruise ship. It's <laughs> like the ratio is way off of men to women. I ended up dating the bassist in the party band. Oh my God. And he was British and like dumb as, na- dumb as a rock. Um, <laughs> and like... I saved so much money. You have no expenses. Right. Um, And it was the easiest job, especially after boom. Um, We would do like four shows a week. And the rest of the time, you're just fucking around on a cruise ship. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yes. And it's the laziest audience you'll ever have. Like you have to burn suggestions, meaning you have to like use them so they can't say them. Because if you ask for a location, they will always say buffet. (laughs) Huh. <laughs> yeah. They always say I mean, buffet. Yeah. I mean, they're a group of people who choose to have the scenery move in front of them on a conveyor belt. Like, right? they don't want to be oh like my God. <laughs> trekking Annapurna. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So we set, we, we sailed from New York to Cape Canaveral, Florida. And then we did like a Bahama route. Mm-hmm. And then we did a Caribbean route, which was very nice. That's so cool. One time we did a cruise to nowhere. Which is just so people could gamble in international waters, and we basically like went out into the Atlantic and then back. Came back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's just to gamble. Yeah, probably mm-hmm. some eighteen-year-olds down there so they could drink. Totally. That's so crazy. I know cruise ships are are such an interesting 
experience. Yeah. You know, we, we took our kids on a cruise and I mean, we've taken them all over the world and we were like, okay, this year we're going on a carnival cruise. Now let me prepare Ooh, carnival. you. I know, right? I know. Ah, <laughs> sorry. Could have been a better choice. Sorry, oh carnival. But we, we went on a carnival cruise and I was like, you just have to, you just have to experience it one time. Yeah. And once you do it, you can go, I don't ever need to do that again. Or you love it. <laughs> so many people love it. I mean, yeah. that's why they're a huge industry. But totally. To be a comedian or any kind of talent on a cruise ship, I think is just a completely different ballgame. You must have like grown some kind of chops doing that, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, I was just bored. So I would I would ask the um, creative director, the cruise director to like for more work. Um, so then I ended up being one of the judges of Dancing with the Stars, like the Dance with the Gem Stars. But this was before our first show. So I pretended I was one of the masseuses at the spa and I was Russian. <laughs> My name was Fetlana, And I was basically just the Simon Cowell. I would just like talk shit about the guests and how bad their form was. And it was so fun. And then people kept requesting massages from Svetlana because she was so mean. And then they were like, wait, she's in Second City. What the hell is going on? Wait a minute. She's not a masseuse. That's a bait and switch. Just to get me in the massage place. That's really funny. It was so, yeah, it was so fun. Isn't it interesting when you, you started, I'm sure, on a path and you don't expect to make the choices that you make that lead you to here, right? No, yeah. Like, I'm sure you didn't go, you know what? I'm going to graduate high school and end up on a cruise ship. Absolutely not. But those those steps along the way are so important. Totally. Yeah. Like, I was a math science nut. I loved it in high school. I, like, tested out of any math and science requirements for Northwestern. I still wanted to take, like, physiology classes and like mechanics of the vocal mechanism, like anything with like anatomy and stuff. My dad is a surgeon. Okay. Um, and my mom is a family law attorney. Wow. So like they, he had expectations for me to go into like probably something a little more academic, mm -hmm. especially because I loved school and I like excelled to be honest. Um, and then I was like, I just love, I'm doing like film sketch comedy here with, the funniest people I've ever met. And they're also so smart. And I did improv there. And then a children's uh, story club. It's like what, um, have you ever been to story pirates? No, it's this group, like it's from Northwestern, but it branched out and it's international and they have a podcast. Um, and they basically take stories written by kindergarten through fifth graders and then turn them into sketches and musical numbers and stuff like that. That's so cool. It's so cool. Story pirates. Uh-huh. That's really cool. I'll and they have, a, they have a podcast for kids. That's awesome. Kissing any of those moms out there want to listen? There's one or two. <laughs> one or two, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, well, you know, being, I'm, you know, I'm married a comedian. Um, he's really smart. And I think Anybody that's successful in the world of comedy in particular has to be so smart. Mm. You, it's not a it's not a dumb game. Even if you think the comic is dumb, yeah. if they're successful, they are not dumb. Yeah. There's no way you can't. So someone who has parents who are a surgeon and a lawyer makes sense to me. If you're creative, that you go into something that takes a lot of thought. Improv is you have to be so smart. You have yeah. to be really creative in a moment. Truly, you know, it's a brilliant. Um, it's a brilliant gift because I, I, I get stumped all the time, especially <laughs> someone just asked me to do something on camera with Bert. And I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> even though I studied acting, that really wasn't my path. Mm. You know, I acted for a few years and went, this is not my path. I am the, always a the person that would go, I think she's probably better for this than mm. me. But but let me rewrite the script. Ah. But she's probably better for this. But if you just change the language a little bit, then maybe that would work for me. But I mean, take it or leave it on me. And that, so I'm not, that wasn't for me. Totally. Um, Cause I'm, I, I'm also chicken a little bit. Yeah. If there's anything else you want to do, like absolutely do that. Cause it is brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. I've, I've seen, you know, ch charts of how many people submit for like a commercial audition. It's like 30,000 people. And then they bring in maybe a hundred. Right. And then they call back seven right and to be like the three people pinned is very exciting and then only one person gets it and then who knows if it's going to run for a long time right 
And all these people, they have to have the ability to go to that like next day audition at 2 p.m. at 200 South La Brea and <laughs> just sit in a room surrounded by people who are like, kind of you, bizarro you, or probably just like a little younger and a little hotter. And then <laughs> you have to go in and show your hands to a stranger. Like, what is this job? Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy, freaky job. Psycho. It is. Well, I, well as I watched you act, I, I watched Minx before Jennifer suggested that you be a oh, guest. Wow. I thought it was great. Oh, I liked thanks. that show very much. I like, I like being in the 70s. Yes. And I like... The lead. Yes. I like her whole story and path. Yes. You are lovely to watch. Thank you. Because you have, your character has such a pure heart. Yes. And just wants to be helpful and just wants to be productive <laughs> yeah. and wants to be, you know, in the middle of this exciting moment. Totally. And it's so awesome to watch. Thank you so much. Um, and I kept what I watched that. And then uh, today, when I knew you were coming, I, I started, I did a little bit of a deep dive on your YouTube. And I was like, the <laughs> one thing that I think, uh, the word that comes to mind after watching all that is that you're very playful. Mm. I find you to be like playing. Yeah. Almost like a child. Yeah. But you don't look like a child at play. You look like a grown up at play. Yeah. And it's awesome. <laughs> I was like, that's freedom. That's, Yeah. It's, do you feel that way? I think so. I think that um, I do. I have a warmth, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and but like inside, I have crippling insecurity and wow. it is very much acting. Like I was having this conversation with Jake Johnson mm -hmm. um, on like yesterday on Minx. And he was like, it's so wild because you like I can see you beating yourself up between takes and then you go in there and you're just like a sniper like yeah. I don't I don't understand it's like a lot of people it's if they had something like bad happen the night before they'll bring it in and they'll add like darkness to the character but you can like completely shut off those voices and you complete like during a take you act with like such confidence and then between takes out and I was like the darkest place in the world is an actor's mind after a director yells cut. It's just, <laughs> I just am like, oh my God, what <laughs> the hell was that? I'm a psychopath. <laughs> but you're not. I mean, from me, you're an audience member watching, you're oh, just thanks. like, you're fabulous. Ah, oh, that's so nice. So fun to watch. And it's fun to watch you. Everything I watched, even your like drunk yoga. Ah. I was like, how fun is that? Oh my God. So fun. <laughs> I loved it. And you're, um, Character audition reel yeah, yeah. from like 2013 or something. Yeah, that was, was I so think, cute. the first time I auditioned for SNL. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Oh, my God. That was wild. I So right when I got off the boat, literally, um, I moved back. I was living on my friend Amanda's couch and um, looking for places on apartments.com or something. And I got an email from a friend of a friend who saw me do improv at Northwestern who said, I am Lauren Michaels' assistant. He is, um, we're, we're looking for p potentially new women for the cast. Are you, I, I think you're back in the States, according to your Instagram. Would you be interested in submitting? Um, here's the name of the casting director who's named Ayala Cohen. Um, ask her any questions. And I was like, oh my God, this I, I grew up watching SNL. I started doing impressions when I was like, you know, of SNL characters when I was five. Um, I just loved it so much. And then I asked her what I needed. She said three original characters, three impressions. And I like, I haven't made up my own impression. Like I would do like Hans and Franz, like when I was five yeah. and crap like that. Um, so I had to I went to this wig shop on Crenshaw. I let them inspire my characters. <laughs> and then I had to come up with like th three originals. And then I submitted it. And then Ayala said, okay, you're very green, but I really, really like you. I'm going to keep you in mind for future years. Um, so let's keep in touch. And then she left SNL, um, I think that year. And she got poached by an agency and so then I was in New York randomly and I kept in touch, like I, I said, like I would. Um, and she said, hey, uh, I'm free for lunch today if you want to come. And I was like, OK, this sounds great. Then she goes, 
do you want to go and audition in two hours? And so I like had never taken a metro before. I went to like a couple stops away, had this audition and I got good feedback. And she goes, I have a good feeling about you. And I think I was her first client that she no way. Yeah, added to her roster. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've been there ever since. And then two years later, I tested for SNL mm -hmm. and that was a freaking blur. I, it's so crazy. People are like, what were your characters? And I have trouble remembering any of it. It's really? Like, and then I was on hold for many months and I went through this, like, I, I, I don't need this. I'm, it's going to be fine if I don't get it. And I was like, oh my God, I really freaking need this. And then I was like, oh, I'll be fine no matter what. And it was truly like made me insane. And then like 10 days before the first um, uh, episode, they released my holds. So then I was like, what? And then I just went into a deep depression. I bet. <laughs> How awful. I mean, it sounds awful. It's so wild. Like you, you're sitting in someone's dressing room and um, you're, you're supposed to arrive at like 2.30 or something and then they'll give you light makeup or powder or whatever. And then you go into this dressing room with all these, like a fruit and cheese plate. Um, and, and I had like a triple espresso drink and it was like 3 p.m. when I had that. And then they didn't knock on my door because they give you 10 minutes because I think that's on purpose. They don't, they stagger you in like a random way and they don't want you to know when you're going to go on because mm. I think it'll show that you're able to perform quickly Under pressure, yeah. if they do like a fast change between dress and the actual show. Right. Um, and you just are holding all your props. You go onto the stage where the monologist, like where the host gives this monologue and then it's wild. It's wow. a wild experience. Sounds crazy. Yeah. I would be terrified. No, it's terrifying. Yeah. But, th but that's on purpose. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Who is not terrified in that situation? I mean, <sighs> someone that's like psychopathic. Yeah. <laughs> it's truly, gotta be someone truly, who's, truly, truly. who's really not healthy. Like, I love this. Yeah, right? Bring yeah. it on. That's really cool, though. What a yeah. great experience. It was such a great experience. Heck yeah. I've, I watched, here's my age, the first episode of Saturday Night Live. Oh, ever. wow. With my dad when oh. I was probably maybe 10 years old. And I watched it for years and years and years. And then I got out of the habit, I think, when I had kids. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can't stay up this late. Yeah, totally. I have to go to bed. But what an institution. Totally. I was just going to use that word. Yeah, it is. Completely. It is nothing like it. Nothing yeah. ever will be. And some people hate watch it, I think, um, which is so weird. I yeah. genuinely find at least two sketches funny. And I, I typically watch it every week still. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. I caught it a couple weeks ago and I was like, this damn show is still so good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a brilliant guy that guy is. Totally. I mean, I feel like my husband and I have different viewing styles of all things, but I just appreciate all the work that goes into stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking about like these women changing their wigs in like 15 seconds. Right. And just like all these, this costuming and the fact that they do these pre-tapes and they look insane. Like they're, yeah. it's so professional. It's such a machine. I just like have an enjoyment. I'm like, look how hard they worked. Yeah, totally. Yeah. To appreciate it. Does he not watch it that way? He uh, is more like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like what, where they didn't end it. It just pitter pattered <laughs> off. <laughs> Is he an actor also? Yeah, he um, teaches improv um, okay. and he's fantastic at it. And he also improvises and acts. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm assuming you met. We met at IO Theater, um, Improv Olympic yep. on now RIP. Um, RIP? Is yeah, it? it's dead. It is? Uh huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. What happened? Um, I think COVID killed it. Yeah, that's too bad. It might have been before COVID, but I'm pretty sure it was COVID. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. Yeah. I love improv. I love to watch improv. Yeah. I've never been good at it. I, I've never really tried it. But the one time I tried it, I was like, and flatline <laughs> and flatline. And but I you're so nothing. you're so whip smart and easy to talk to. I feel like that would make it very easy for you. It's, it's the it's the if we were in my backyard, I'd probably be great. It's yeah. The on stage lights, everybody that's that that part. The same with acting. Like once I got like on stage or in front of a camera, I was like deer in the headlights. Well, Chris teaches improv to like everybody. Yeah. And a lot of his performers are not actual performers. Oh, yeah. There's like tech individuals and moms and like, yeah, it's great. They and he goes more fun? serious. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Just to build confidence. And yeah, he can. 
shine those turds up to a gleam and shine. <laughs> hey, shining turds, not so bad. Daisies grow out of turds too. <laughs> right? Totally. Totally. This week's episode is sponsored by Factor. I don't know if you've tried this meal service, but I really like it. It is fresh, not frozen meals delivered and they heat up in two minutes in the microwave. They're delicious. There's tons of varieties. You can have four meals a week. You can have 18 meals a week. You can order gourmet meals. You can order meals for more than just yourself. They have smoothies. They have snacks. Personally, I love their smoothies because what I do is I take a big gulp out of their smoothie and then I add some protein powder and shake it up and now I have a protein shake. And their smoothies are so delicious. I am so busy. I don't really have time to plan. Lunch is my lunch is my nemesis because I just don't have time to eat something healthy. I'm always shoving like a sandwich, a burrito, a taco, whatever I can get my hands on. Factor makes it so easy to eat healthy because they're pre-packaged. You open them up, two minutes in the microwave, and you have a delicious gourmet chef created meal, um, fast, hot, delicious. Head to go.factor75.com slash wife60 and use the code wife60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code wife60 at go.factor75.com slash wife60 to get 60% off your first box. I'm telling you, I eat these meals myself and they're delicious. You should give them a try. Go.factor75.com slash wife60 to get 60% off your first box. (laughs) So when you were a kid, did you think you were going to be an actress? No, but people always told me I was funny. Yeah. Um, And I always made people laugh and I'm a people pleaser and a perfectionist. And so... I, Perfect fit. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like coming from Albuquerque, there's not a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, like I did some like plays in high school and stuff, but it never felt like that was going to be my path. No. But I got a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. So when did you really decide? I still hadn't decided when I came out to L.A. No. Like... I knew that I wanted to maybe give it a try or maybe go like a different marketing path, Mm -hmm. something like that. Um, But just doing more and more improv, uh, it just lit a fire. And then once I think once I did boom and I was Mm -hmm. making 100 percent of my income from performing, that's when it like flipped the switch. And I knew that that was going to be my thing. That's so cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, not. The, my my biggest success felt like when my parents knew that they didn't need to worry about me. Right. That's amazing. That's got to feel really good. Yeah. When you when you got to that place. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Are your parents still alive? Yes. Then they're still in Albuquerque. Yes. Do you get back there often? Not as much as I'd like. No. Um. Do you miss it? I do. I miss the food. I mean, I always, when people are like, you're from Albuquerque? I'm like, yeah, it's a shithole. Like, Breaking Bad. <laughs> like, um, But the, it's... But it's not. It's not. No, I, I was there. I was there not too long ago. But the first time I went to Albuquerque, I was 20. Mm. And I had never really been anywhere. I'm from rural Georgia. And I hadn't really been... I'd been to Florida yeah. and Alabama. And yeah. that was it. <laughs> and my dad was like, let's go skiing out in New Mexico. Oh, amazing. So we went to Taos, mm. Red River, Angel Fire, and Santa Fe. So you're pretty good at skiing because Taos is a tough mountain. Taos was pretty tough. Yeah. I was pretty, it was still very green when we took that trip, and Taos was very difficult for me. Yeah. Um, but the other three, I did great. Glorious. Um, but I remember feeling out there really like, strangely spiritually grounded yeah does that make sense totally like it's and the light is that what it is yeah it's and it's similar in amsterdam i noticed that when i got off the plane like i think that's why Vermeer was so excellent and that's why george o'keefe could see things that other people couldn't i think right. the light there is just special and it sort of it makes everyone glow a little bit 
That's interesting. I, I thought it was the earth. Yes. But and also it might right. be how high up. And I think it's like <laughs> Albuquerque is 5,600 feet and uh, like Santa Fe is 7,000. So you might not wow. have been getting enough oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> you were slightly lightheaded. Yeah. <laughs> you were maybe almost passing out. Euphoric. <laughs> you were literally a little <laughs> Rocky Mountain high. <laughs> right? I don't know. I liked Albuquerque. Um, we went, uh, you know, my family's pretty, um, pretty country. So when we went out there, we, um, we went in a truck with a slide in camper. Great. With my dad and his best friend. Yeah. And so we would pull up close to the ski resort or close to Taos and park. And that's where we would sleep. I would sleep in the cab of the truck and my dad and his friend would sleep in the slide in. Oh God, I hope you had a nice heater. I know, right? It's freezing. Ah! That's one of those nights when you're like sweating because you're wearing so many layers. Exactly, exactly. Like, God, my feet are so cold. And then you're cold because you're sweating. Yes. And then you're sweating because you're hot and that makes you more cold. Yeah, that was exactly it. God. It was pretty, it was pretty redneck. <laughs> I love that. But it's a memory. Yes, you know? totally. I look back at that whole trip. We did all that snow skiing and then drove to um, San Diego and up the coast and then ended up in Vegas. And then my dad and I flew home and his friend drove the truck all the way back home. But I remember by the time we were driving from LA to Vegas, I'd had, I was 20 and I'd been with these 40 year old men for like 10 days. Oh my God. And I got in the biggest argument <laughs> driving across the Mojave Desert about the pronunciation of the word margarita. <laughs> we argued for, I think, probably two or three hours. What did they say it was? Margarita. Oh no. <laughs> and I was like, it's margarita. I am so tired of you people. Oh it's just God. margarita, okay? That's like <laughs> British Bake Off when they did Mexican week. <laughs> They're like guacamole. <laughs> exactly. Oh my uh, margarita. It's a casadula. No, oh, no. It's a quesadilla. <laughs> it's a casadula. Oh I have a margarita with my casadula. And I was oh like, oh my, my God. God. Oh my God. I mean, I haven't been anywhere, but I know that's not how you say it. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's my, the end of that trip was not the best. <laughs> <laughs> not the best. But at least you flew home. I did fly home. Yes. Drive an additional 30 hours. No, forget it. No, <laughs> not with Mr. Margarita. No. Oh my gosh. No, that was my dad's friend. Anyway, <laughs> I still love and adore him. He's like an uncle, but that one moment in time, we were not friends. <laughs> we were the opposite. We were enemies. Uh, anyway, so when you first started, was SNL like your dream or what was your dream? I think at one point it probably was. Yeah. Um, I think that show would have wrecked me. I think that it would have destroyed because it's really hard. Yeah. And the lack of sleep, like when I'm sleepy, I get weepy. Like, I don't think I would have been <laughs> like a positive, prolific writer in that right. like situation. Um, so, yeah, it was my dream. And I think that it has like such star making potential. Um, but. Yeah, I've had other opportunities and my husband calls me a journeyman. Like I'm just slowly but surely making moves like that's just I'm like a little turtle trying to finish this race. But it seems like you're making really good moves. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's been a good couple of years. Like I booked Minx um, fall of 2020 and then we shot the pilot in November and then we got picked up and then I shot it a year later, season one. And right now we're shooting season two. Mm hmm. Um, and before that, I did three years of a TBS show called Minx. And then before that, I was doing guest stars and um, some a random movie here and now. Yeah. What was I, your favorite I, thing you've worked on? Um, Probably Minx. Yeah. Yeah, it's special. It is um, special. It's a really cool show. Yeah. Like, I would say season two of Wrecked um, was very fun. We were in Fiji. Ooh. It started off great but then it really started feeling like a five-star prison no oh, god like, everyone gets stir crazy and no one has their loved ones there mm. and you're just a cog in a machine and you see every single person that you work with at the two restaurants that are available god. it was everyone got a little stir crazy so like that show was very fun to shoot but um everyone went a little crazy yeah and i feel like i still have some like 
psychological wounds. Some PTSD. From that, yes, 100%. That's so funny. <laughs> Some island PTSD. Yes. Not from the cruise ship, but. I know. <laughs> they were like similarly length. I don't know why I had <laughs> such an, oh my gosh. Well, that would make sense. I mean, if you're seeing the same people every single day, there's two restaurants and you can't leave and you can't see your other one. Yeah, that would be yeah. really hard. Because yes. at least you get off the boat. True. When you're on the cruise ship. There's, there's no getting off the island. Yes. No one leaves the island. No one leaves the island. Oh, my God. <laughs> so is there one person that you would have always wanted to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Oh, man. I mean, like, that I have worked with Sandler. Like, he's just the man. Yeah. He is absolutely so genuine, so talented, so caring. Like... He's such a good family man. People give him shit for like shooting movies and gorgeous locations and just doing one easy movie a year. I'm like, he could do that. Yeah, totally. Let him. Let him. Yeah. Um, Rejoice. Totally. Um, I'm trying to think who. Hmm. That's a great question. I'll have to think about it. Yeah. Think about it because I wonder. Yeah. Um, I would love to shoot more movies with hilarious women like mm -hmm. um I would and, and like stars who are happen to be funny like I feel like Reese Witherspoon is so special mm -hmm. oh my god Jennifer Coolidge oh I would die she's die okay. she's a national treasure she's actually. everything yeah she's every single treasure. take is the funniest take anyone could possibly do are you watching White Lotus, White Lotus? yes oh my god it, she's just delicious she's delicious yeah and she always has been from yes. the first time I saw her. The first time I remember seeing her, obviously, was American Pie. Yes. And you're like, who is that? Yeah. And then Best movie. in Show. It's the oh. funniest shit you've ever seen. Ever. Yes. Her jumping up and down in those feathered high heels she used kills me. I can't. Can't we, get that out of here. We both love soup. I just, <laughs> everything she says is so fucking funny. I forgot about that. Yeah. We both love soup. She asked for an Oreo cookie cake at breakfast in um, Sicily on White Lotus. I oh, my like, God. What? Yeah. We don't get a lot of improv on Minx. That's no, that's tough for me because all I want to do is improvise. Mm -hmm. But it's it's such smart writing, and they're so specific, especially with my character. Really? Yes. That um, sometimes I'll say, but when it's supposed to be an and, and like they need me to say it exactly as scripted. Wow. Yeah. That seems very like pressured. It yes. would make me feel pressured. Yes. And Bambi speaks very quickly. Uh huh. And she's just an effervescent uh -huh. little crazy person. So everything I have to say has to be word perfect and fast. Wow. It feels like. So that is something that I struggle with, but I'm getting better. I think you're awesome at it. Oh, thank you. Uh, what I've seen, I'm like, you're is such a good character. <laughs> Do you like playing her? Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. The only thing I keep saying whenever I'm interviewed about this is I went from my couch during COVID, like peak COVID, yeah. like just literally turning into a potato, um, <laughs> just wearing my husband's sweats, uh -huh. just being just a slouchy little goblin. Like, <laughs> I, like, I don't even know what I was on the scale into like, okay, so you're sort of, you're, I mean, you're not sort of, you're, you're sexy and you're not gonna be wearing a lot of clothes <laughs> and, um, you're going to need to be very tan. So I went from wearing like the bulkiest shit to like the shortest stuff. Um, literally some of my stuff was so short. If I sat down, my ass would hit taint. Like oh my, my ass oh would my hit God. chair. It oh was like God. gnarly, like the tiniest outfits. I'm just like a tomboy. So wearing <laughs> these like girly short 70s. Oh, also the only thing I have in common off screen and on screen during COVID with Bambi was that neither of us wear bras. Perfect. Just never wearing a bra. I mean, on camera. The, why, why not? Why not? She never wears anything that. Yeah. Everything's very low cut. Yeah. Like right between the boobs. Like you see. Wild. The whole, yeah. It's like a landing strip from your I neck know. to your navel. The whole thing. He says, yeah. But you look great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you look like someone from the 70s. Totally. Everybody in there looks like someone from the 70s. Yeah. Which is really awesome. Yeah. You know? I mean, the vibe is so cool. Yeah. Like just makes you walk different. Like, it's just, it feels like there's like a baseline going on whenever you're walking around the office <laughs> and cool. everyone's got stupid hair. I just love it. I, lo I think it's so fun. It is fun. The costumes are great. Yes. They did a great job. Yes. I, they've done a great job. I was a kid in that era, you know, 
I was born in 1970. Amazing. So I... Yeah, it looks right from what I remember. Everything looks like spot on. Yeah, my mom is definitely Joyce, the lead character. Is she? Yes, like she's a super feminist, but she's also sort of prudish, uh-huh. which I think is like a weird juxtaposition. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's she loves it. And th- this is probably the smartest thing I've been on. <laughs> so yeah. she she like really, really loves it. I and bet. she can't wait to see season two. That's so exciting. <laughs> That's so exciting. So does anybody in your house eat pumpkin pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. My gorgeous, skinny, thin as a pin husband is pie guy. So we were, I'm a huge Costco person. Yeah. I, and I probably will reference it a hundred times during this podcast. And we were, we were just going through Costco in September and we walked by the pies, the pumpkin pies that are giant. Yeah. I think they're 18 inches in diameter. They're giant. They're like a tire. It's wild. I think they have 4,200 calories. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. So we were walking by and Chris goes, you know what? I love pumpkin pie and I only it's I only get it once a year and I was like not this year baby this is before we were married I was like you are an adult and I have a Costco membership you're gonna have as many of these as you like and he ended up using it as breakfast as a pre-workout as a post-workout snack he would eat it like late at night he didn't gain a pound and he ate nine Costco pumpkin pies the first year. He ate nine? Yes. And my favorite thing in the world was I had like a basically like a hidden camera show. Yeah. Um, in my mind, of <laughs> catching him eating pie at like ridiculous times of the day. Um, and he'd be talking to himself, like he'd be going, Ooh, baby. Oh as he's my cutting God. cutting into it. And people loved it. People were like DMing me saying, this is my favorite movie I've ever watched. I will watch the show till I die. And so then we did season two and he, season two, like a of the, second Thanksgiving. Yeah, pie man. Um, and he was doing, we were doing it again and I didn't know how to like heighten. I didn't know how to up the game. <laughs> like I would get him like pumpkin pie cookies whenever I found them and pumpkin pie ice cream and make him little sundaes and stuff. People just want that pure pie. Yeah. Um, But yeah, he... Ate 11 last year. Oh my God. Now we're in season three and he finished three and he sort of said that he's over it. Oh my and God. And everyone is devastated. Wow. But last year he was walking our dog and someone across the street goes, excuse me, are you pie guy? Are you kidding? No. Oh my God. And he goes, yes. And he was like, he was like, I follow your wife. You're the fucking man, dude. Like, he, <laughs> like Chris cannot gain a pound when he's eating... 4,200 calories. Yeah, I think we call that an asshole. Yeah, that is a true, what? true asshole. What a turkey, man. I know. I guess it's like those like enzymes. I don't know. Fucking. Is he super tall? Yes. He's oh, 6'3". that's three. Yeah. Okay. There you go. The 4,200 just spreads yes. all over. My five foot four goes <laughs> right in the middle. Yes. Just right in the middle. Yes. It just gets like, yes, right in the middle. Uh, do you have kids? No. No. We got married in January. You did We're, what? You got married in January. Yes. Oh, you're just newly married. Yes. Aww. I took off my ring because I get spray tanned for the show. So I, I'm not wearing it. It's so embarrassing. But um, yeah, it was the best. We honeymooned in Italy. Ooh. Um, that was our, both of our first time. That was the best. Um, Where'd you go in Italy? We flew into Rome. This is my like proudest trip I ever put together. It was truly perfect. Flown, flew into Rome, had two days in an Airbnb that was very cheap um, for us to recover. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we took a train, which we loved, to Naples. And then we went to Ravello, Ooh. which is a city up in a hill. It's like all 14th century wow. architecture. It's just stunning. I think it's where they shot the opening scenes of Wonder Woman, oh, the original, wow. where all those yeah, women yeah. are practicing javelin. Amazing. Um, and so we spent three days there at Palazzo Avino, which is owned by these two amazing severe looking Italian sisters. <laughs> they have a little wiener dog. They always wear like just Gucci, 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 Gucci. Oh my God. And they're incredible. They're the Avino sisters. Um, so anyone who's listening, if you go to Italy, I could not recommend this place enough. It costs a billion dollars, but like two days there and you'll 
feel like a queen. That's amazing. Um, then we went to Amalfi. Mm-hmm. Then we went to an, a little island called Ischia uh-huh. off of Naples. And then we went up to Florence for three days and then back to Rome. Wow. That's it, an amazing trip. It was the best. Yeah. It was truly. Like, I now I want to go back every year. Yeah. Italy is pretty, pretty it's, amazing. Yes. Um, what was your favorite place in Italy? Where, what was Maybe Ravello. Mm. Um, I liked Ischia because I got to stand up paddleboard, which is like one of my favorite things. Um, but Florence had our favorite food, I yeah. would say. And then we loved seeing the David and yeah. seeing all that art. It's yeah. just truly incredible. The David is pretty mind blowing, isn't mind-blowing. it? Mind blowing. It just, you can't even believe it's, it's like, it should be a wonder of the world. Truly. I mean, it's just, and then it's Michelangelo, right? I'm an idiot. I think so. Idiot. Yeah. Um, he was skewed perspective he made the head bigger than it should be because he knew people were going to be gazing at it from below and just like the way he knew hand veins Mm -hmm. would respond to holding something hefty like just incredible it's people who didn't have devices they had a lot of time on their hands and nothing to do but just reflect and think and create like that you know like he didn't spend eight hours watching love is blind no 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 not no no, (laughs) definitely not maybe a blind lover but not love is blind um i don't know i i worry about the the future of art and so back to the kids thing yeah i'm very worried about kids yeah I just don't what are you know worried about like I just have existential dread like I just read too much like I there's, there's too much bad news and yeah. I just have sort of this great fear about like is Miami going to be gone in 40 years and yeah. like are there going to be like water wars mm-hmm. like a lot of it is environmental yeah and like the human impact on the environment mm-hmm. and how wasteful we are and how yes. destructive we are and how there's like huge inequity in the world. I just like, it's too, my brain goes crazy when I think yes, about things. I feel that way too. But I'm like, well, I feel like the reason I would have a kid is so that my parents can hold a grandbaby. Like Aww. it would truly be for them. Yeah. Which is not a reason to have a kid. No, that is not. It's, it's a little more commitment than just that. I know. But I feel like Chris is such a fantastic person and he's so kind and he like goes to the end of the earth for our dog. Mm. He'd be the best dad. Yeah. So well, if he's a good dog dad, he'd be a good dad. He's incredible. I think. Truly. Well, I didn't think I was going to have kids. I had no plans of having kids. Um, and when I had a kid, I was like, wow, this is um, crazy. Yeah. The thing about having kids that I don't think people talk about is that if you're an open person, which most actors are pretty open, it if you watch the kid and really try to see who they are, it shows you who you are mm. more than I think you can learn otherwise. So like my daughter, Isla, is very, everybody thinks she's like Bert. She's a big outside the box thinker like Bert, but she's wired very much like me. And so I would watch her as a toddler when you don't have you know, sophisticated thought processes. You don't have like manipulation or anything that in your brain. And I would watch her move through the world and I'd go, oh, hold on. I do that. And that's not good. Like I need to stop doing that. Do you think she she was mimicking you? No, I think it was just hardwired. I think it's just hardwired. And um, same with my other daughter. Georgia is very similar to Bert. So I would watch Georgia and go, oh, he's not doing that on purpose. Because if she's doing that, then, um, yeah, she didn't learn that from him. That's just how they're hardwired. Obviously, some things they learn. Yeah. There's learned behaviors. But that's the that's the one thing about parenting that I didn't expect. Mm. I really didn't expect that. You know, you expect it to be a love like nothing else. And, you know, all these other things people tell you about. But that one piece, I was like, if you're self-reflective, it becomes like a really deep therapy almost. Oh, wow. Where you can just go, I understood Bert a lot better after I had Georgia. A lot better. Because <laughs> so Bert's, a, Bert's a, a confusing person sometimes. <laughs> Very confusing. Because you go, how can you be so smart and so dumb? Yeah. At the same time. How does that coexist? <laughs> and then I watched my daughter be smart and dumb at the same time and go, ah, maybe the dumb's not his fault. 
Maybe it's just a package. I don't know. Oh my God, you know? that's the best. I don't know. I like, I also feel like as an actress, mm-hmm. there are incredible pressures to stay a certain way. Yeah. And like permanently changing your body through the miracle of like growing eyeballs in your belly. Like, yeah. I mean, it's truly a miracle. It just, I I don't know if the industry, I'm, I, there's many, many act, working actresses who are mothers, yeah. but I don't know if I'm like, I just have this worry that I'm not at a level where I can take a year and a half off or something and then come back and like and bounce right back. Yeah. So to speak. Well, I mean, like it's, get hired still. It's a valid thought, but you're super talented. Okay. Uh, but you know, the flip side of that is not to discourage you from having kids, but who says you have to, you know, if you don't, if you're not inclined, I know some people in my circle who probably shouldn't have had kids mm. where the, the idea of it was amazing, but the practical application of parenting is not a joke. Like yeah. you can't phone that shit in. No. If you phone it in, you are fucking up a human being. Yeah. So you have to, if you're not present to do it, you have to hire someone or be married to someone or have a parent who can really plug in and do it right. And if you're not willing to do that, then then maybe that's not where your path is. I don't know. I've got, I have a friend who is an executive and has kids and was like, I just hire someone who's my nanny who does a great job. And yeah. I, because I can't, I, I'm not, she's not wired to be a stay on the floor and pick up blocks and wipe <laughs> drool all day long. It, it, she would, she would lose her mind. Yeah. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's really? wrong with being a working mom. As long as you are, you know, taking care of your kid and it, growing your kid in a healthy way with whatever help you have. But not everybody's meant to be a mom. I think it's, um, that's another pressure on women, obviously, because men can't really pull that one off. Mm-hmm. Um, that isn't always necessary. I yeah. Mean, why it's necessary that you have. I had no plans of being a parent. Um, Can I ask how old you were when you had your girls? I was uh, almost 34 when I had Georgia and almost 36, like a month. Almost 36. When yeah. I had 34 and 36. Um. That's like a big thing on the internet is that my age is very wrong on Google. <laughs> and now I feel like I need to keep this going. Yeah. I mean, it it is so wrong. It says I'm so much younger than I am. It is truly. Cha-ching. It's, I mean, it's truly psychotic though because people are like, damn, she looks bad. <laughs> for like, <laughs> for 22. It says I'm 22. It does? I'm, yes. Well, based when, on the fact you did stand up. I know. I, you're not and 22. Of based course. On that, of course. That date, you know. I am. A million times older than that. Right. I am between 35 and 45. So it's like I'm, but that means I'm going to be a geriatric mother. If you try. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be a geriatric mom. And it's okay to not be a mom. And it's okay to be a great aunt. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not something you should pressure yourself into. You know, the thing, listen, I am on the verge of empty nest. (laughs) And when this first started, when my daughter went off to college, I started going, hold on. (laughs) I put 18 years into this institution that's falling apart and it's supposed to fall apart. (laughs) I'm, I'm building something that is purposefully leaving me. What is that about? That is so fucked up. It's so fucked up. And I'm supposed to go, good for you for leaving. I spent 18 years building this shit and you're leaving. And, and is then, she close? How? She's close. I don't want to tell us. Oh, yeah, She's yeah. close. She's close enough. But I mean, Arm's I, can't, length. I can't go see her like today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could get there tomorrow. Totally. So I'm like, but literally I had that moment of like, I got screwed. I got really screwed here. And but the flip side of it is I'm happily married. Yeah. And now that I've started seeing like our empty nest future, I go, oh, okay, hold on. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Because we would have had, I, I would like to think, I'm very glad I have kids. Don't get me wrong. I love my children. But if if that hadn't been my path and I had just been with Bert, I would have, we would have had a fucking blast. <laughs> so, you know, if you're with the right person. Yeah. Kids just add to that. Yeah. They don't, 
it doesn't really, I mean, it just adds to it. But I think about that from time to time now that we're almost empty nesters. I go, wow, I would have been on the road with him. We probably wouldn't have this house. We wouldn't need it. I'd be this, well. This house is incredible. Well, thank you. I love it very much. We I can't wait to our, move in. I know, right? God, I have a nice guest room. Uh, no, <laughs> we we um we are very kind of practical people. Even though this house may not look very practical, but we saved our nickels and dimes for years to build this property, and um, our overhead is not very much because we were like, if the bottom falls out of everything, we want to still be able to live here. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think that's kept us really grounded to not buy something or build something, it, whatever that is house or whatever it is that you couldn't really, really handle. Yeah. You know, I think especially artists get in, they have a minute of success. Yeah. And then they buy the $8 million mansion and three years later, that show or that movie or whatever is dry is dried up, and now you're in a, a crisis, an emotional, uh, almost a self esteem crisis. Yeah, because this thing, this thing that you bought, defines you in some way. Where we tried to engineer that opposite. That's great, and I do the same thing. You do. I save, 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 yeah. save, save, save. Yeah, because because you don't ever want to be motivated by money. To create art, mm -hmm. right? You want to be motivated by art to create art. Money shouldn't be in it, I don't think. Yeah, um, agreed. You, you should. I worked. For, uh, I was a writer when Bert and I met, and I was actually, I was actually more successful than him. We first started dating, but once we got married and had kids, I was like, I, I got to get a job. Like I can't write like I did before because I'm a mom, and I wasn't making enough as a writer to have a nanny so that I could write. So ah. it's like, I got to push pause and Bert couldn't possibly have a job. I can't imagine him having a regular job. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he got fired from Barnes and Noble. You oh know how hard that must be. God, <laughs> He got fired from every job he ever worked. That wasn't comedy. That is so, hilarious. So I was like, huh, let me see. I think I'm going to bet on me. <laughs> for Paying the rent. And then you go off and we'll build this together. But, um, but he always, I would always, th he said to me, if I'm thinking about money, I'm thinking about the wrong thing. Hmm. I should be thinking about writing a joke or what am I doing on stage or how do I market myself? So I just took all of it from him and dealt with all the money so he could just create. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. It's a good team, I guess. Yeah. That's a great team. Good team. So anyway, I don't know. Did you grow up with art in school? Yeah, I mean, I loved art in school. Um, I think we had it all the way through. Uh, maybe not high school, unless we asked for it. Like, I took, like, photography and painting. Um, I think it's so important. I do, too. It's so therapeutic. And yeah. it just, no matter what, it's going to release something. Because you have to put something into it. Yes. Um, I think it's so important. I feel like... I'm not sure how it is in Los Angeles, but I'm sure they have some art. A little bit. It's kind of going away in in public school. It's mm. not really. It's a very small part. A lot of stuff's going away in education. I think that that I think is important when we were kids. That they're just everything's so academically focused. Yeah, that worries me about the arts in the future too. Is they're either on a device or you have to be like calculus, calculus. Yeah, and those middle kids who aren't. Calculus, calculus, don't have an art class or athletics like some. Yeah. Like we did when we were younger. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, what are we going to do? Just change the entire government. No. Um, anyway. Um, so who's that person that your dream person you never worked with? Have you thought about that person? Well, I think it's got to be Jennifer Coolidge. She'd been my number She's one. The one. She's, She's the one. But I would also like... I don't, um, I think that, uh, Mila Kunis sounds really cool. Like, yeah. I think she would be probably a blast. Um, I think, uh, why am I blanking on her? I'm literally the worst at names in the world. Um, Phoebe from Friends. Lisa Kudrow. Oh, yeah, Lisa Kudrow. Yeah. She's awesome. 
I think she's so funny and so smart. Um, anyone in that realm. Right. Like who just worked their asses off in the 90s and got some success in the 2000s and is like still doing incredible work. Yeah. That's cool. So if there's a, if there, if think about all the comedy that you've ever seen and connected with, is there a role that you would like to play? Um, I've never played, I've never played a mom. I no, would, I don't mean that. I oh, mean like okay. a character. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I should have said a character like Phoebe from oh, Friends. Okay. Is there yeah. a character, film, television, anything? Well, I, I am, I am Phoebe. So <laughs> I feel like <laughs> Phoebe from Friends, a hundred percent. Also, Karen from Will and Grace. Yes. I love Megan Mullally. Oh, she's brilliant. And I feel like she and her husband have incredible sex. Like the way they talk to each other, they, they're they just, it's like, God damn. I'm going to be like, fly on the wall. Um, doesn't it seem like that? I, mean, I just don't know that I've ever seen them talk to each other. Oh my God. They just seem like they want to rip each other's clothes off at every moment. They're <laughs> wild. Um just ass up in the woods type shit. That's um, cool though. I know. Hey, they've been together forever, right? Uh, yes. They still talk like that? Yes. That's fucking fantastic. I know. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah, like tr- truly those types of characters. Like, I don't necessarily I've I played like a few lead roles, but I just love playing just the like hilarious side character. That's just my mm-hmm. Cup of tea. It looks really fun. It's so fun. You look like you're having fun. Yes. And when you're having fun, then we're having fun watching you, right? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it looks like you're having fun. You look like, like I said, you look like you're playing, we used to call it uh, pretend. Mm. You look like you're playing pretend all the time. Yeah. That's really cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really fun, and I feel very lucky to get to do it consistently. You are really lucky to get to do it. There's so many women in this city, in the world, who would love to have the opportunity. Now, what do you think makes you different than all the 30,000 people that goes down to 100 people that goes down to seven people that gets, what makes you different? Um, I go in for a lot of roles that are like an eye roll of a character. And I always try to imbue them with some fragility Mm. and like some nuance Mm -hmm. rather than just playing the punchline. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like a lot of it's like Bambi definitely had some crazy shit happen to her um, before the season started. Um, Like she literally survived a cult like um, but the creator Ellen um, was saying, we're not, still not sure if Bambi is Forrest Gump or just a liar. So I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I gotta know. Oh my God. I don't know if she's just making this shit up or it all happened to her. But um, yeah, I think just when I go into an audition, the ones I book is when I'm trying to think, what can I do to make this casting director laugh? Like what? No, I don't want to just like do what I think they want. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like do some sort of like mental mind games and be like, okay, I'm pretty sure they want her to sound like this and look like this and um, have her hair like this. I, I try to say, what's the funniest shit I can do as Jessica with these lines? Mm-hmm. Like, how can I be sort of like a Ah, <sighs> that was different. Yeah. Because even if I'm not right for that role, if I make them laugh, they might consider me for something else. And yeah. that's happened on like a couple things. Right. Where I go in for one character and they're like, I don't know if you're right for that, but maybe we'll have you read for this one. And then I get it. And you just, you can never be an asshole. And that is a way to have, you know, like a chain of good things happen to your, to you. Is he like, you, you have to be professional, prepared, and easy to work with. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of, people aren't I think and so if I have like a good reputation anyone who's worked with me will say have you oh I saw you worked with Jessica Lowe as as how was she and if they have nothing negative to say that's great because I always say this acting is like a mathematical proof you just need one no to completely have it fall apart right interesting like it has to Every person has to say yes Mm -hmm. in order for you to get a role. Right. There can be one executive and be like, 
She looks like my bitch ex-wife. She can't be that character. So true. So it's completely out of my hands, which is very uh, mentally exhausting. But um, yeah, you just have to keep doing your best. Just like. Yeah. That's a great formula for any job. Yeah. Right? Any job. If you do a job well. That I mean, what's the point of not doing a job well? Yeah. I mean, it, it it hurts your heart, I think, when you are an asshole. Yeah. Just to be an asshole. What's the point? There's no point in that. I don't know. I think acting is very, very hard, but it is. If anybody's listening to what you just described, you can apply what you just described to any career. You know, who wants to work with, a, you know, a nurse that's an asshole? Yeah. Or who isn't genuine? Or who doesn't make a good impression. I mean, nobody. Yeah. Nobody wants to spend every day with that person. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. God bless you for acting. (laughs) It's a tough, tough hang. Yeah, it's very dumb. (laughs) It's not dumb. (laughs) It's not dumb because, because I think we forget when we live in this city where everywhere you turn, there are creative, truly creative people Mm -hmm. everywhere. But when you get into the rest of the world, it's not like that. People go to uh, a job and they go home and they want to relax and enjoy themselves that night. And they turn on the television or they go to the movies to do just that, to escape. And not even for a bad reason, for a good reason to escape into some entertainment. Totally. And it's kind of a, it's like, a, it's almost like a public service to be a good actor, someone you can escape into enjoying is a really big gift. I yeah. mean, it's a gift that you give to people to be able to portray this character or your next character and have people really enjoy it and genuinely laugh about it. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that makes us human is having the ability to laugh. Like, I, I know, like, chimps can laugh. Um, but I think, you know, like, mourning our <laughs> deceased... And laughter are, is something that makes us very human. Yeah. And so, like, I, I, do, I do agree with you. And and that's something, and my my parents are very, like, they're not funny people, but they are have told me in the past when I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I used to <laughs> love science, and this is what I'm doing, um, as they're, like, putting body makeup in my armpits. <laughs> um, and they were like, Jessica, do you know how many people have laughed at things at lines you've said like just think how if you've made one person smile if they're having a bad day like that's a lot that's huge yeah so your parents aren't funny not really they think they are but i would say that they're not and where'd you get your funny i don't know my dad thinks he's very funny but i think just trying to like being one of the only like uh, being one of the youngest on my on my cul-de-sac and just being the only girl, like I had to sort of be like make a splash in some way mm-hmm. and then just doing impressions like just from a very early age, I was doing impressions. And I and I loved the feeling of seeing loved ones smile or mm. or like or laugh out loud. That was there's no greater rush. So, yeah, just from there, I just always did impressions and funny voices and stuff like that. Um, and then at my bat mitzvah. It was right during the Bill Clinton uh, ish issue. Yeah. Um, impeachment. Um, my Torah portion. Oh, I'm, I'm Jewish. <laughs> I, I figured that one tell. out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, but was, I figured it out when you said my mom. My, my mom is Jewish and my dad is Methodist. Um, there, my Torah portion was about David sleeping with a um, with Bathsheba. And it said, but he did not lay with her. And so I up, I'm doing my translation and in the middle of my pop mitzvah, it's a huge congregation. I was like, he did not have sexual relations with that woman. Oh my God. I'm 13 and I was a very late bloomer. Um, so I was like this big <laughs> and there was like a moment of silence. And then the rabbi laughed so hard he fell out of the chair. Oh my like, God. And then everyone started laughing. I was like, <laughs> yes. Score. Score. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just it makes me it brings me endless joy to make someone smile. Yeah. 
It's a rascal quality, right? Yeah, I'm totally a rascal. You're totally a rascal. <laughs> Rascals are the most fun. I think you're a rascal. I am a rascal yeah. from time to time. <laughs> yes, I've been known to be a rascal. But rascals are super fun. Yeah. They're mischievous and harmless. Totally. I think rascals are harmless. I agree. Well, I've enjoyed talking to you, Rascal. Yeah, it's been so <laughs> nice to meet you. It has been. Thank you so much for coming and doing this. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. And I hope everybody watches Minx that listens. That yes. would be amazing. That would be amazing. And can do a deep dive on your YouTube and see your five minutes of stand-up. No. <laughs> so embarrassing. And your drunk yoga. Oh, my God. And I have God. to say... The teenage boy reading Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, that one's pretty good. I mean, it killed me. Oh, my God. You were an adorable little boy. I mean, yeah, he just was trying to act like he wasn't into it, and he was very into it. Very into <laughs> it. It was adorable. So are you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> 